Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining me this morning. These are the readings and sermon for Sunday, July 10th. So let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, your mercy delights us, and the world longs for your loving care. Hear the cries of everyone in need and turn our hearts to love our neighbors with the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 9 through 14. A reading from Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors, when you obey the Lord your God by observing his commandments and decrees that are written in the book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us, so that we may hear it and observe it? Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us, so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a reading from Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. Our second reading comes from Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. A reading from Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength. <clears throat> may you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, 
in whom we have the redemption and forgiveness of sins. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. Just then, <clears throat> a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you need. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the winter of 2006, an astonishing thing happened in New York City. A construction worker named Wesley Autry was standing on a subway platform with his two young daughters, waiting on a train. Suddenly, another man on the platform, apparently suffering from a seizure, stumbled and fell off the platform onto the subway tracks. Just at that moment, the headlights of a rapidly approaching train appeared in the subway tunnel. Acting quickly, Wesley Autry jumped down onto the tracks to rescue the stricken man by dragging him out of the way of the train. He immediately realized that the train was coming too fast and there wasn't time to pull the man off the tracks. So Wesley pressed the man <clears throat> into the hollowed out space between the rails and spread his own body over him to protect him as the train passed over the two of them. The train cleared Wesley by mere inches, coming close enough to leave grease marks on his knit cap. When the train came to a halt, Wesley yelled up to the frightened onlookers on the platform, there are two little girls up there. Tell them that their dad is okay. Instantly, and for good reason, Wesley Autry became a national hero. The Subway Superman. That's what the press called him. But the headline in one newspaper described him in biblical terms. It read, Good Samaritan Saves Man on Subway Tracks. Wesley Autry was indeed a good Samaritan. When my family and I lived in Massachusetts, we would often take day trips into Boston to see the sights, and we always took the subway into the city. When I hear a story like this, it makes me wonder, if I had been on the subway platform that day, what would I have done? Would I have had what it takes to jump down on those tracks and help that man? Would I have been a good Samaritan that day? Many people believe this is exactly the question Jesus wants us to ponder in our gospel lesson this morning. The parable of the Good Samaritan is perhaps one of Jesus' most familiar stories, and the way we usually hear that parable is as Jesus' way of getting us to ask ourselves, 
Am I willing, when the circumstances arise, to be a good Samaritan to others in need? But is that what Jesus is really saying to us in this parable? Let's take a look at why he told it. Jesus was headed toward Jerusalem, and along the way, he got into a rather testy conversation with a local attorney. The lawyer evidently didn't like Jesus' message and was attempting to expose a weakness in his teaching. He, he was, so to speak, cross-examining Jesus. In your view, he said, just what I need to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus said, you're the lawyer. What does it say in the law of Moses? The attorney knew what the law said and he quoted it. The law says, love God with all your heart and soul and strength and mind and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, you're right. Do this and you will live. In other words, Jesus is saying life with God involves knowing more than correct answers. It's about actual practice. But the lawyer wasn't going to let it drop so easily. Wait just a second, Jesus. Just who exactly is my neighbor? So it was in response to that challenge that Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's about a man traveling down to Jericho who is mugged by robbers and left bleeding and near death beside the road. Now the road from Jerusalem to Jericho was notoriously dangerous, full of thieves and unsafe to travel alone. So the fact that a man was beaten and robbed was a familiar story. However, two shocking things happen in Jesus' story. The first shock is that two people who would have been expected to help, a priest and a Levite, saw the man in trouble and just kept walking right on by. The second and even bigger shock is that a Samaritan is the last person in the world anyone would expect to stop and help because Jews and Samaritans had a bitter history of racial and religious hatred towards each other. Now, Jesus is Jewish, and the lawyer and the rest of those listening to this parable are also Jews, including the characters in the story. So having told that story, Jesus says to the lawyer, so who proved to be a neighbor in this story? The lawyer can't even bring himself to mumble the word Samaritan. He simply mutters, the one who showed mercy. Go and do likewise, Jesus says to him. As I said before, <clears throat> some people think that what Jesus is saying in this story is, I want everyone to go out and be just like that good Samaritan. Go and do likewise. But there are two problems with this. The first problem is that if this were really Jesus' point, then he would have made the story into a simple moral lesson about not helping someone in need and not included all that Samaritan business. But this isn't a simple moral story. It's a parable, and parables always have something surprising and unexpected to be wrestled with. And in this story, it is the fact that an unwanted, rejected Samaritan is the one who shows mercy to his enemy. So there's more going on here than merely, okay, folks, go out and be just like that good Samaritan. The second problem is even more significant. If Jesus' point is that he wants us to imitate the courageous compassion of the good Samaritan, the sad fact is often we can't do it. It is simply not in our nature to forget ourselves and risk everything for a stranger like Wesley Autry did. For example, not too long ago, and as happens much too often, there was a news story about a man who died on a New York City street as people kept walking right on by. Apparently, a homeless man had rushed to the aid of a woman being robbed and in the process was stabbed. The man lay bleeding and dying on the street for an hour as dozens of people just walked on by. Finally, a man did stop and saw his wounds and called 911, but by the time help came, the man was already dead. The newspaper article concluded saying, 
It isn't unusual to see homeless people passed out on the sidewalk in New York, and it wasn't clear from the video how many people realized the man was in trouble. That is a disturbing story. A homeless man was trying to be a good Samaritan and wound up getting stabbed and left to die on the street as people just walked on by. But I guess we shouldn't look down on those people who couldn't put the parable of the Good Samaritan into practice because often neither can we. Doesn't our society teach us not to get involved helping strangers? It's dangerous. Mind your own business. If you see someone in trouble, don't stop. Just keep walking right on by. Even knowing in our minds what the right thing to do is does not mean we can do it. If we are going to be good Samaritans, then this will mean more than a change of mind. It will take a change of heart. And that is what this parable is all about, a change of heart. A study was once conducted at Princeton University about why some people are generous and compassionate while others are not. The results showed that for many compassionate people, something had happened to them. Someone had acted with compassion toward them, and this experience had transformed their lives. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Sure it has. And that's the point of Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan. What the lawyer discovered and what we discover is that we cannot stand on the sidelines trying to figure out how to be good, defining our terms wondering, is this person my neighbor or not? For all of our religious virtues and attitudes, we just cannot be good Samaritans on our own strength. In other words, we are the person in the ditch, the one who lies helpless and wounded beside the road, the one who needs to be rescued. And along comes a good Samaritan named Jesus, despised and rejected, who comes to save us, speaks tenderly to us, lifts us in his arms, and takes us to the place of healing. As the Apostle Paul said, while we were still God's enemies, God saw us in the ditch and had compassion, and in Jesus came to save us. So, my friends, the question is not, who is my neighbor? The question of the parable is, who has been a neighbor to you? The answer is Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen one has been a neighbor to you. He has come to bring God's love, forgiveness, mercy, and grace into your life. Jesus is the Good Samaritan. Remember, life with God involves more than knowing the correct answers or the right thing to do. It is about actual practice. So if you have felt Jesus' mercy make your own heart merciful, then go and do likewise. Amen. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all now and forevermore. Amen.